Suppose that x and y are not rational. Then what can we say about this? x to the power of y. Is this always irrational? It's easy to jump to that conclusion. But it might be surprising to some of you to know that sometimes x to the power of y is rational. We'll start off with an existence proof. We're going to show that a rational x to the power of y does indeed exist. We won't construct it, but we'll show that one of them, uh, at least one of them exists. Now to do this, I need some facts. I need to prove that the cube root of three is uh, not rational. And I need to prove also that the square of the cube root of three is not rational. And the proof then follows from these things in a very interesting way. So let's work on this. So let's assume uh, we'll use the same kind of contradiction. And I'll use the same type of proof like, like for root two and see the link. Uh, there's a link uh, where I did a video on how to do it for root two uh, in various ways. So let's start with cube root of three, we'll make an assumption that this is m over n, this is a rational number with m n uh, being co prime, so there's no common factors. And now cube both sides, get that and we can write m cubed is three n cubed. All right, so when we analyze this carefully, we see that three divides m cubed, but that implies that three divides m for reasons that I explain in that video. But it should be kind of clear to you because we've done this many times now. So three divides m, but if three divides m, that means 27 divides m cubed. But that means since 27 divides m cubed, 27 must divide three n cubed. So there's three factors of three here, but only one over here. So there must be a factor of three in here. So three must divide n cubed, but that means three divides n, and that's a contradiction. Contradiction, because we said uh, they are co-prime, but here we're saying now that uh, they both have a common factor of three. So that's a contradiction. So it must be it must be that cube root of three is not rational. Okay, so we're done there. Now for the next one, we need a lemma. And the lemma works like this. So if r is a rational number, and r is not zero, and let's say x is a, an irrational number, so not in q, then then this implies that r times x is irrational, so it's not in Q. So we can now put this together. Cube root of three squared times cube root, this is three. This is actually rational, of course, okay. And we just proved that this here is irrational, not in Q. So what this means is this cannot be cannot be in Q cannot be in Q because if it was in Q, then we would have rational times irrational and that would be not rational. So this is a lemma. And uh, it's easy to prove. Why don't you go ahead and prove it? It's fun to prove. And so okay, so we have a contradiction here, we if we assume that this this here is rational, then we get a contradiction with this. And so therefore, it must be irrational. So therefore, cube root of three squared is not in Q. Great. <laughs> so now I can use these facts to construct some very interesting proof. Case one, we're going to assume that the cube root of three to the power of the cube root of three is rational. 
Okay, so let's assume that. I don't know if it's rational or not. We're going to analyze both cases. Well, in the first case, let's say it's rational. Then what? Then we are done. We are done. Why are we done? Because I take x is cube root of 3 and y is cube root of 3. And we proved they're both, well, they're both the same, but they're not in Q. They're both irrational. And we know that x power y is in Q because we assumed this over here. So we're done. We have an example of two irrationals when one is raised to the power of the other gives you a rational. But what happens if this is not rational? Well, that's case two, right? So what happens when it's not rational? Well, we let x equal cube root three to the power of cube root three. It's gonna be a lot of cube roots here, man, you'll see. And we'll take y is cube root three all squared. And we know this is not rational. And we know this is not rational by hypothesis because this is case two. So let's raise them to the power of each other. And we get this. Yeah, cube root three, <laughs> cube root three. Okay, so we can now bring this inside and that multiplies the powers like this. Okay, I got a power of one cube root three here and a two here, so I get cubed here. But that is just cube root three to the power of three, and that's three, and that's in Q. So we are done. We have x power y is in Q. Either way, one or the other is going to be rational. So we have a proof of existence. But we don't know which one. We still don't have a, an example of which one. This proof doesn't tell us. We would have to appeal so, to some much more sophisticated stuff, you know, if we want to go and answer which case is actually true. Is it one or two? I think you can answer this question, but it, it requires some much more uh, sophisticated uh, theorems. Okay, so that's very interesting, but we would like to, uh, to do uh, maybe more than this. But before that, this proof was uh, a little bit on the crazy side. Why don't you try to do it with other numbers like root 2, root 5, and so on. That it, it's quite interesting to think up variations of this proof. So I'd like you to try that. And maybe you can find a version that's simpler than this. X and Y are irrational. And we know there exists a rational x power y somewhere, but we haven't found it. So let's look around and see if what we can find. Something like this would be good. Let's say x is e, that's pretty irrational, and y is log log 2. That, well, is that irrational? Well, we'll see. I'm, I'm not sure. x is e, this is not rational. This one, I don't know yet. But if, uh, if it's irrational, then x power y, that's e log 2, that's 2, that's rational. So this would be a good example if we could prove that this here is irrational. So let's try the usual approach. Let's assume that uh, log 2, log 2 is m over n. And here we'll, we'll say that m and n they're both not zero, okay? You don't want them to be zero. So, okay, so let's raise e to the power of both sides. Log two, that's e to the m over n. But this gives us two equals e m over n. And I can change this around and get two power n equals e to the power m or Finally, I can write it like this, e power m minus 2n equals 0. So, uh, what did I gain here? Hmm. Well, we did gain something. It seems that e is a root of an algebraic equation, let's say, u power m minus 2n equals 0 for some, for some powers m and n. And that means E is an algebraic number. However, Hermit proved that E is transcendental, so this is a contradiction. 
And therefore, log two is irrational. And we've got our, our construction. We have an example here of two irrational numbers, e and log two. And when you raise them, uh, you get a rational. OK, this is great. Uh, it's excellent <laughs> proof. But I'm relying on something really fancy here. And that's this proof that E is transcendental. And uh, maybe I would rather not rely on that right at the moment, because that's some fancy mathematics. Uh, is it possible to find something simpler, a simpler construction, like really elementary? And the answer is yes. We poke around a little bit. Indeed, especially if we poke around a little bit with log, because log as it turns out, is really good for creating irrationals, uh, creating numbers that are known to be irrational. So let's try one. Let's try log 2 of 3. And so let's assume that this is rational, m over n, where m and n are not 0. I'll, I'll explain this not 0 in a second. So OK, so now we take 2 power log 2, 3. This is 2 power m n. And I end up with. 3 equals 2 power m n, and this is 3 n equals 2 power m. All right, so this is impossible because the only way it can be true is if m and n are, are 0, but we said they're not 0. I mean, you want a fraction, not a, not a uh, undefined number. <laughs> so this is impossible. You can't have products of a prime equal to product uh, of power of a completely different prime like that. That's impossible. And so log 2 base 2 of 3 is not in Q. And you see how easy it was to discover our own uh, class of uh, irrational numbers using logs. So now we can use this idea. Let's use this grand idea here. I just chose some r random irrational. So this one here, this is not rational. OK, this is not in Q, root 5. But this one I'm assuming is not in Q, but I have to prove that. But if, I, if both are irrational, then I get x power y is root 5 power log root 5, 7. And this is 7, and that's in Q. So my job now is to examine this and to prove that this is not rational. All right, let me use some log tricks and rewrite this. This is log 5, 7 over log 5, root 5. And here I used uh, log AB is log CB over log uh, CA. Yeah, like that. All right, so this gives us Hmm, log 5, 7 over 1 half, and that's 2 times log 5, 7. So I know that this is irrational. OK, why? Because I know. And I want you to do it. I want you to prove this. Use the same technique as I did above, and you go ahead and prove this. It's very fun to do. Now we use the lemma. Remember the lemma? If r is a rational number, it's not 0, and x is irrational, then the product is irrational. So this, this whole thing is irrational. And so therefore, log 5, root 5, root 5, 7 is irrational. And there we go. There we go. x power y is a rational number. As an exercise, you can try to think up more of these. I'm sure you can come up with an infinite number of examples. But they're fun to do. I, I, you might find some original ones. You just keep playing around with logs and roots, and you might find some really interesting ones. And if you find a good one, post it in the comments. Well, that's it for today. If you like this video, click like, leave a comment, subscribe. And um, if you find interesting examples of x power y that are rational, 
let me know in the comments if you find some other technique. If you find a different way to prove log 2 is irrational, let me know. Write it in the comments. And I will see you next time.